So some people have been having some trouble with their outlines and as a result I decided to do a quick uh, PowerPoint on um, how to prepare your argumentative essay and in particular how to write your outline. Now we're going to do a little bit of background work but uh, that's going to be the focus is on the outline. Um, however, in order to get there we need to do some, some stuff in the background. I'm going to try to do this in about 15 minutes. Uh, it might take 20, we'll see. Ha. Okay. Uh, this is aimed, by the way, at philosophy of law uh, at Champlain College St. Lambert. So if you are not in that class, um, then you may have to make some adjustments to what's um, said here. So what are the basic elements of your essay? The thing about writing an argumentative essay is that you need to know a couple of things. Remember, first of all, that we are writing an argumentative essay. That is to say, an essay that's going to try to demonstrate the, the truth or the reasonableness of a thesis. In order to write that kind of an essay, well, obviously, you need to know what you're writing about. You need to know that for any essay. And the other thing you need to know for an argumentative essay, which you don't need to know for all essays, is what you're trying to prove. The second thing is what makes the difference, really. However, the first one's important as well. If you don't know these two things, you're just going to be lost. So let's move on. Point to B. Well, first of all, what you're writing about. A lot of the time when people uh, are asked, what are you writing about? You're going to say something like, oh, well, I'm writing about uh, natural law theory, or I'm writing about euthanasia. Well, you know what? Those are uh, subject areas, but you're not writing about your subject area. You're not writing about natural law or euthanasia or rights because these are entire subject areas and, a, and an essay, especially a 15 to 1800 word essay, cannot just be about all of natural law or everything to do with euthanasia or all about rights. It just doesn't work that way. It's just too much. So instead, your essay has to be written about some element of one of these. By the way, since I mentioned it as an aside, your paper is 1,500 words long. Um, once you get to 1,800 words, I'm going to uh, start getting cranky about the length. I start to think that it's too long around then. If it's less than, eight, than 1,500 words, that's okay as long as you've done the job. The question is, can you do the job in less than 1,500 to 1,800 words? If you go above 1,800, and it's amazing, then I might overlook the fact that it's too long, but it needs to be amazing. Okay, so your essay is going to be focused by asking a good research question. Now, in, now in fact, I'm going to say that your research question is actually what your paper is about. But we'll get there. The research question is something that motivates your essay. It's the reason you're writing your essay. I want to figure out the answer to this question. That's why I'm writing this essay. The research question focuses the essay and the research essay guides your research. In other words, if you don't know what your question is, then you're going to have a very, very difficult time figuring out why you're writing this essay you're going to be all over the map when, you come, when it comes to doing your research. And when you write it, you're also going to be all over the map because you're not really going to know what you're talking about. It's the question that focuses things more than anything else. And the clearer and more precise your question, the better it is. So we're asking a research question. Now, I said a few minutes ago that your topic isn't natural law, for example. It's too broad. It's an entire subject area. and You're writing about something in natural law. So, for example, this is an essay I got, uh, I've had in the past. Would Thomas Aquinas have permitted gay marriage? Uh, we could ask that question. Then that's a question in natural law theory. Okay. Or we could ask a question about euthanasia. What kind of question could we ask? Well, some of you are asking this kind of question. Who, if anyone, should have the right to medical assistance in dying. It's a current topic. Lots of people are talking about it, and so we're getting some essays on it. It's an important topic as well. Or you might be interested in rights, and maybe you're interested in uh, the right to free speech. Well, 
if you said that to me, I want to write about free speech, I'm going to then say, well, no, you need to, you need to narrow it down even more. What about free speech do you want to write about? So perhaps you've settled on the question, should Canada maintain its law banning hate speech? Now that's a very, very specific question. And it's a question that allows you to answer it very clearly as well. So what you need, in other words, is a specific answerable question within a subject area. Okay, continuing along. What did I say earlier? Your essay is about the research question. It's also kind of about the thesis, but not really. It's the research question is the topic of your essay. In other words, if you say, if I say to you, what's your essay about? The best answer you could give me is my essay is about whether or not Canada should ban um, hate speech. That's your question. Okay. The answer to the question is the thing that your essay is trying to prove. Okay. It's not what it's about. Your essay isn't about the thing it's trying to prove. The thing it's trying you're trying to prove is a result of that. We'll call that the thesis. Okay. Now, if you say, you know, my th my uh, paper is all about how we should ban hate speech and Canada's right to ban hate speech. That's okay. You can say that kind of thing. I'm just trying to point out that when you want to really focus your work, it's better to think about the question than the thesis. Um, the other reason for this is that the question keeps you open-minded. The thesis um, closes your mind a bit. And when you're writing a paper in philosophy, philosophy is, an, is a field in which reasonable people can disagree and stay reasonable. And um, that means when you think about the question rather than what you think the answer to the question should be. Uh, when you research the question, you find that you're discovering both sides of the coin. And when you actually write your paper, you can write it more in depth, more interesting, better organized paper as a result. So, however, the thesis is the answer to your question. What is a thesis? A thesis is a declarative sentence that directly answers the research question. In other words, it declares something. It's a proposition. The thesis is either true or false. You can't have a thesis that says there's no real answer to this. I mean, I suppose in some fields you might. Um, you are never going to get me saying to you, yes, that's fine. You can tell me there's no answer to the question. If there's no answer to the question, I'm going to ask, why are you bothering to write the essay? Um, your thesis takes a side. Your thesis takes a stance and says, this is true. This is the correct, or this is the best, or this is the most reasonable answer to this question. For example, for the question, should Canada maintain its law banning hate speech, I could have a very simple thesis. The thesis is, the law banning hate speech should be maintained. Now, I know some of you want to write whole paragraphs for your thesis. That's because you've been trained to write a thesis statement. A thesis statement is a different kind of thing. It's what you would write in your introduction to your essay. I'm asking you to actually identify the thing that you're trying to prove in your essay. That's the thesis itself, okay? So that's why I'm saying the thesis is a single declarative sentence. Okay, so as you research, outline, and write your argumentative essay, remember that the essay is about the research question and the essay is supposed to prove the thesis. And I know a lot of you are now asking me this important question. Wasn't this supposed to be about outlining? Fine, about outlining. I haven't said these things for no reason. This is an argumentative essay. The word argument is in that word, right? It's an argumentative essay. That means it has to be structured as an argument. Your essay should take the form of an argument in support of your thesis. What is the structure of an argument? Every, this is going back to a class you already had, right? This, you should have had this in your earlier classes in the program, but let's review. If an argument is present, that means that it has premises that lead to a conclusion. If it doesn't have all three of those factors, it's not a it's not a uh, an argument okay if it doesn't have premises it's not an argument if it doesn't have a conclusion it's not an argument 
The thesis is the conclusion. Okay? So whenever I talk about the thesis in an argumentative essay, I'm talking about the conclusion of the argument that the argumentative essay is providing us. And the premises are the various points that you raise in support of your thesis. Okay? One way to think of this, now I'm going to use the number three here, but the number three is not the key. What I want you to see here is the structure instead of the, the number of items in the structure, okay? But very often people will have three main points. I'm calling them premises here. You wouldn't call them, you wouldn't refer to premise normally in your essay. You would call it your, your points or just the sections of your essay. But you're normally going to have two or three main points in any essay. And each of those points is going to itself be supported by further points. So we talk about the, the reason for believing the thesis, which is the premise. But we also talk about the reason for believing the premise, which is the subpremise. And so when you write a paragraph in your essay, you're writing a main point in favor of your uh, thesis, a reason to believe that your thesis is true. And you're writing reasons to believe that the thing you just said is true. So that's what's going here. So these three funnels show you the sub-premises going to the premises, and then the premises go to the conclusion, okay, and the thesis. And please remember, you don't have to have three sections and three premises. You don't have to have five paragraphs in your argument, introduction, conclusion, and three body paragraphs. You don't have to have that. You can have a different number of paragraphs in this essay. Um, you, can, you just need to think about the sections of your essay and what you're trying to prove. And this 333 is just an example, okay? But to outline your paper, point being always, always, always start with a clear statement of your thesis. And that clear statement of your thesis has to be the answer to a clear question, which is either implicit or explicit. Now, in fact, in your case, I want your research question to be explicit. I want you to say it right out. Okay, so I'm going to provide the evidence for your thesis. Again, your paper is going to have the structure of an argument, and an argument is premises leading to a conclusion. But of course, in your essay, you're going to give your conclusion first, that's the thesis, and then you're going to give the premises, so you might want to diagram it like this. It's a conclusion supported by premises. The arrow is still going from the premises to the conclusion because the premises still support the conclusion. Okay, as an aside, it's not an aside, it's very important. You have to have a critical perspective. What does that mean? A critical perspective is a point of view. It's a theoretical point of view that allows you to build the argument that you're going to build. This is why I've been saying you have to use a theory from the class. Okay, if you don't use a theory specifically from the class, you can use a set of established principles or values. You could use a single principle if there's an important one that you think you can use. Uh, you can use a single value if you think that's what you can use. But that's a little harder, in fact, than using an actual theory, in my opinion. It depends a little bit on what you're doing. Okay, now the thing about this is I'm not asking you to have a section where you talk about, about it. You might need to have a section where you talk about the theory, but you also might not need to. The thing is, this isn't a point in the essay. This isn't something that you're doing just because you got to do it. It's not a hoop you're jumping through. The last thing I want is to get an essay that says point one, point two, point three, blah, 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 blah. oh, and by the way, natural law theory, oh, and by the way, rights theory, or whatever. What I want you to do is take the point of view of rights theory, or natural law theory, or Dworkin's theory, or, or positivism, or whatever the theory is, and I want you to use that in order to support the point that you're trying to make, okay? So it's not just a point in the essay, although it should be clear what you're doing, right? It should be explicit. This is actually your point of view as you write the essay. <clears throat> so what is the basic structure of your outline? This is what you were hoping I would get to all along. Now we're there, okay? When you produce your outline, the first thing I need to see is the research question. 
The second thing I need to see is the thesis. Then what I need to see is reasons for believing the thesis is true. There could be two of these, there could be three of these, there could be four of these, there could be one main one that is built up with a discussion that goes beyond, although usually there could be two or three. Okay, and then you need to have reasons for believing the reasons. You need to explain them, you need to support them, you need to somehow back them up. Okay, so what we call the sub-premises in the uh, previous diagram. Okay, and then because this is a philosophy paper, you need to have an objection and a reply to the argument. What does that mean? It, remember what I said about uh, reasonable people being able to disagree. If you proposed a topic that didn't have any disagreement about it, I told you your topic was boring and asked you to find a new one because the only thing that makes an argumentative essay interesting is if there's something to actually build an argument about. If your paper is just obvious, it's not worth writing. That means that there are going to be people who think you are wrong. And there are going to be very smart people, people smarter than you, who think you're wrong. And, and what that means is you need to take them seriously. So what you need to do is be aware of the objections that could be raised to your argument. Make at least one of them explicit and show why it doesn't kill your argument. Okay, now this could be an objection to the entire argument, or it could be an object. Uh, it could be an objection to some part of your argument. You could even start your essay with the objection, and then make the entire essay a reply to the objection. I, I do that a lot, actually, personally. Or you could have some some point in the paper that's important enough that it matters that you raise an objection to it, and then you turn around and say, "Why is this?" Not, not going to harm it. Now, sometimes you're going to have to modify your thesis a little bit as a response to the uh, objection, but usually you'll be able to just um, keep going and reply to it. Okay, This does not weaken your argument because by showing that you're aware of the other side and that you can respond to it, you actually strengthen your argument if you do a good job. Okay. Uh, sometimes you will also need a concluding statement. You always need this in your essay, of course. It's called a conclusion, but um, in your outline, you might only need it if you have uh, uh, modified your thesis or if there's some other reason. Let's talk about these three things. Thesis is the conclusion to the argument. Um, you need reasons for believing the thesis. You need reasons for believing the reasons. Well, what would be my what could be my uh, thesis? I've created a partial. I've partially created an argument here. Um, it's not going to be complete, but I've done a little bit of work here so that you can see the kind of thing I'm after in an outline. So suppose my thesis is: it is permissible to disobey an unjust law. My question would have been: uh, is it ever permissible to disobey a law? And my answer was: it is permissible to disobey an unjust law, right? Uh, so, my first reason for believing the thesis is true. Well, law must promote the common good. Now, that doesn't sound like a direct answer to the question, but you'll see it, it's part of an overall argument that actually gets us to the idea that it's permissible to disobey an unjust law. What's the reason for believing that reason? Well, first of all, the idea that law must promote the common good is a basic principle of natural law theory, uh, promoted by Thomas Aquinas. Now, notice what I've just done here. I've just told you that I'm using natural law theory as my theory. Okay, my whole argument is going to be from natural law theory now. Now, the second thing is, according to Aristotle, the state exists because humans naturally live in groups. And I would go on, right? I would say that the law then, um, the law is created in order to regulate the activity of those groups. That becomes my third point. It's rational to believe that the law exists for the good of those groups. Otherwise, why would we have the law, right? We naturally live in human groups. The, it's rational to believe that law exists for the good of those groups, and that's the common good. We call that the common good. So law must promote the common good because it's rational for it. It's rational for us to believe that the law must do that. Now I'm going to have a second reason, and I'm going to have a third reason. I'm not going to give you the whole thing, but my second reason could be this. A law that does not promote the common good is an unjust law. 
and I would have a reason, a sub-premise and a second sub-premise. I might only have two, right? Uh, and then my third premise might be that an unjust law is not a law. Now remember, I'm asking whether it's ever permissible to disobey a law, and I'm answering that it's okay to disobey an unjust law. Well, now I've said a law that does not promote the common good is an unjust law. The law is supposed to promote the common good, and an unjust law isn't a law at all. Okay, and that's still Aquinas. Now, my sub-premise to this one could turn out to be an objection. I might say, hold on, Aquinas says that an unjust law is not a law at all, but maybe we, should, we have to obey law in general, even unjust ones. Maybe he's wrong because of the principle of the rule of law, for example. Right? The, if we don't obey the law, we undermine the law, and we undermine all law by refusing to obey laws that we think are unjust. And then my second sub-premise might answer that objection and back up the idea that an unjust law, in fact, isn't even a law at all, and that might be why we're, uh, it's okay, in spite of the principle of the rule of law, to disobey an unjust law. Okay, so that's the general structure of my outline. And if you can make your outline have that kind of a structure, obviously filling in the, the gaps that I've left here, then your outline uh, will probably do okay. Notice, though, we'll give you some final tips here, because I want you to notice a few things. Everything in that sample outline I just ran through supported everything else. There was nothing just random. It wasn't just a list of stuff. Everything existed in order to support some other point in the essay. I had created an argument. In an argument, if the premise does not support the conclusion, you don't want to include that premise, right? So here, you don't want a list of facts or ideas without context. You want them to actually support the premise, okay? Just because it's an interesting fact or a cool idea does not mean it has to go in your essay. Maybe you don't want it there at all, okay? Lots of quotations don't help your essay. In particular, do not make your outline just a list of quotations because that doesn't tell me what your argument is. That just tells me what other people have to say on the topic. I need to know what your argument is, okay? So don't put in lots of quotations. If you put in a quotation, it should be an illustration of a point that you're, that you're actually going to explain, okay? My recommendation for the outline is do not use quotations at all. Do tell me the references um, where you got your information from. Do not quote directly. Remember, research is not about finding quotations. Research is about building the argument and understanding what you're doing, okay? Understanding the research question. By the way, something that does not work in your outline is something I already just mentioned, subpoints that don't contribute to the argument. If it doesn't contribute to the argument, drop it. Also, do not replace argument with rhetorical questions. That's a fallacy. Okay? Don't ask questions. Make statements in your outline. You should always make statements. You should never ask questions in your outline. And there's more to it than that. But I think I've gone through pretty much everything. Hopefully this has been helpful. And uh, I'm going to end on that note. And happy writing. <laughs>